Welcome back to another travel outlook and forecast here by Adrian by the forecast and this is going to be another update here for watching for Bill in the Bay of Campeche in Gulf of Mexico. The National Hurricane Center has now updated their outlook and we have some very interesting numbers now as well we are looking at for the overall conditions and whether models are continuing to be very consistent with this development and whether we're watching out for the United States. But before we get into the forecast I would recommend that you guys do subscribe to the channel as I'll be doing outlooks and forecast like this throughout the whole hurricane season and as well i do recommend you guys do hit that bell icon so you can get notified as soon as i post and as well smash that like button so i know who likes these type of videos but with that further ado let's get to the tropical outlook so here's looking at the five-day tropical weather outlook here by the National Hurricane Center for the North Atlantic. And we do now have another orange region here for the Atlantic. And this obviously is showing that we do now have a medium chance for development for this low pressure here. And we actually do finally have an X popping up. So we do finally have that low pressure now in the Bay of Campeche as it is June 12th. So we're watching out for this to stay like this for a few days. And then we're watching out for development possibly within the next five or six days so we do now have a 40 percent chance and a 10 percent for the next 48 hours i do think that it'll stay at 10 percent for uh, at least today and tomorrow because i do not see this developing whatsoever within the next 48 hours or 72 hours but formation overall through the, the five days is a medium out of 40 percent here so we will continue to watch out as we now have an area of cloudiness and showers over the Bay of Campeche. So we finally have that low pressure with thunderstorms now over the waters. And we are looking at this will be through a low pressure. So development of the system is possible over the next several days as it moves slowly and erratically. And a uh, tropical depression could form in this area by the middle of next week here. So we're watching that possibly by the 17th or 18th here for a depression. And it can very well form to a storm by later next week as well. So watching out for some really heavy rain across this region of uh, the Bay of Campeche. That's exactly why now we do have the X finally highlighted on the National Hurricane Center update. Because we do now have finally an area of showers and cloudiness in the Bay of Campeche water. So that low pressure is finally there. The thing is... Could it form within the next few days as a depression as well watching out for mid next week to late next week for this to be a tropical storm but let's not go ahead and get a look at the models so here's a look now at the gfs update here on 12z so let's go ahead and go all the way up to next week here so actually low pressure they actually do have a low pressure of the gfs as early as possibly june 15th there at 1006 millibar so they do have a low pressure and that's reasoning most likely why they continue to increase its chance because uh, or this low pressure is finally here and obviously the GFS continues to show this low pressure uh, hovering over the Bay of Campeche water for the next few days here which is why I don't see that probability for the next 48 hours increasing any much more at least for today and tomorrow however I do see that 5% climbing ever so slight ever so slightly every single day so i do think as we gradually get this low pressure to hover over the waters we're finally see this thunderstorm and cloudiness and that'll all kind of come together surrounding this low pressure but as we go later on here into around june 17th and there's that low pressure making its way now outside the bay of camp pg at a thousand five millibar so at this point it can very well be a depression and if not later on becoming a weak tropical storm and then you see that low pressure right there at 1,002 millibars right there. So at this point, June 19th, we're watching out for this pos possibly to be a weak tropical storm. You can kind of see it's quite lopsided, most likely because of the dry air and the sheer ripping this storm apart, which is why it's most likely not going to be as strong as it was forecasted to be. Again, in the earlier updates and earlier this or earlier this weekend and la late um and late. Uh, I mean, earlier this week, it was actually getting up to 980 millibars, 970, 990, but obviously there's a lot of limiting factors here. So the GFS has it making landfall here now, kind of where uh, the CMC was taking it yesterday in this region. So I'm watching out for a little bit more of a western shift here, like I did say uh, yesterday. I do not see this making landfall in Florida or Alabama. The conditions are just absolutely terrible there, and it would completely die out and not even form before hitting the region. So that's why I'm saying it can very well most likely hit Louisiana or maybe I, I think I'm still watching out maybe for Texas here. I'm watching out for this general region here for Atlanta, Louisiana, Texas, or Mississippi there. I think Alabama and Florida just it's just not gonna happen. The conditions are just uh trending this storm to the west here. Let's not go and get a look now at the Canadian model, see what they're showing. So let's go and see what they're showing. So obviously they do have a little pressure kind of coming off 
of the Bay of Campeche waters and off the Yucatan Peninsula. And by June 18th, we do not have this at 1,005 millibars, not too far off Yucatan and the Bay of Campeche. Add that go later on. This storm is at 1,001 millibars already. So the CMC is once again having the storm be being stronger than the GFS that has been consistent throughout yesterday and now today. So it looks like the GFS today is taking it a little bit more to the east like this. It's going through a lot rougher conditions. So it's obviously going to be a lot weaker and a lot more disorganized. However, the CMC still has this quite disorganized, a pretty big open low with the eastern quadrants having the most amount of tropical rainfall there. And it does have now around 1,000, nine, actually 990 millibars. And then it has making landfall at 1,000 millibars for Louisiana. So GFS and uh, CMC starting to take this to, towards either Louisiana or portions of Mississippi. Let's not go ahead and get a look now at the vorticity here on the GFS. So by the 15th, uh, 15th there you can kind of see that area of low, that area of vorticity surrounding that low pressure in portions of the southern Bay of Campeche. And by the 16th and 17th, you can kind of see, or, or actually 16th and 17th, you're going to start seeing that vorticity now pushing all the way up now into portions of the central Gulf of Mexico. And then you see it hits portions of Louisiana by the 19th. So it's still a good amount of vorticity still forecasted, but uh, it's going to be very, very open and disorganized. Let's not go ahead and get a look at the Canadian model. So as you do see, they have an area of vorticity off the Yucatan Peninsula and portions of the northeastern Bay of Campeche and that does make its way to the north. And by the 18th, the storm is heading a little bit more towards the west northwest. So kind of heading to the direction here of Texas and Louisiana and the western Gulf of Mexico. So I think we can still eliminate the eastern and Pacific, or not eastern Pacific, sorry, eastern Gulf of Mexico out of this landfall or track uh, area because obviously the conditions in that ridge are going to be it's the ridge is going to really rapidly push that shear towards portions of the eastern Gulf of Mexico. So overall, there's going to be a pretty big moisture wave and a pretty big moisture bubble within the storm. It's just not going to happen in the eastern Gulf of Mexico because it'll get ripped apart if it were to move there. But that's why we're watching out for the western Gulf of Mexico. So either this storm develops in the Bay of Campeche or off the Yucatan Peninsula, it's going to head west-northwest at some point and either aim for Louisiana or Miss Mississippi maybe at its far east or portion of Texas. So kind of really the middle is Louisiana. So I think Louisiana has now become the state to watch out for. We've kind of had a lost state to watch out for with this system, but now it looks like Louisiana. And there you see that vorticity making landfall right there. So the low pressure possibly making landfall by the 19th. So the area to watch out for landfall wise is the 19th. So we're basically a week from landfall. So we're less, we're far less than a week uh, from this low pressure developing. Let's get a look now at what the European is showing here vorticity wise. So they are still showing this becoming uh, developing right in the far southern Bay of Campeche. So by the 17th, we kind of have a small little area of rotation, the atmosphere around the low pressure and that continued to strengthen by the 18th. And then by the uh, 19th, the storm, obviously low pressure goes further into the Gulf of Mexico into this more favorable conditions as that shear pushes to the north. And that's going to be a, a line for a big open pathway of very little shear to no shear from the Bay of Campeche to Louisiana and Texas. And then the European has it making landfall by the 20th uh, for portion of Louisiana. So there's a 19th to 20th is what we'll be watching out for this landfall. But a, European has ever so slightly have has had a lot less vorticity on their map. So overall, it looks like this storm's going to be quite weak, maybe a very, very weak tropical storm, maybe 40 to 50 miles an hour. Because I mean, the conditions overall in the Gulf of Mexico will be quite horrendous with the amount of shear. I mean, the shear is going to be all over the place. Even as that ridge moves to the north, there is still going to be some shear in the western Gulf of Mexico. So the good thing is if this storm is a little bit weaker and it has a smaller wind field, uh, wind field, it will definitely have a lot better chance to develop in those smaller pockets of shear and that kind of sneak in some strength. That's the only good thing about this storm being very disorganized and weak and small. But if it was a really large storm, obviously the wind will be a lot larger. So with the low pressure air will be a lot stronger. So it'll be way easier for this one to get ripped apart. But that's not the case with this system. So there's definitely a, a chance this can sneak a sneak uh, is strengthened within those gaps. So obviously that gap is large enough. So I guess conditions are horrendous overall. But with, with that low pressure, it's actually not too shabby. Let's not go ahead act, now that we're speaking of shear, let's go ahead and look at the shear here. So let's go all the way up into the uh, 15th and 16th. You see, we have that ridge kind of dipping down into portions of the Western uh, Caribbean and portions there of the Southern and Central 
Gulf of Mexico at that point. Much of the northern Gulf of Mexico and portion of the Bay of Campeche still have very little amount of shear because that ridge is kind of concentrated within that central portion there. You kind of see those strong winds coming from the west. So that's why the Western Caribbean has been eliminated for a, uh, eliminated a long time ago for Bill. As we're not going to the 17th, that's kind of where we start to watch after that low pressure. And there, that low pressure in the Bay of Campeche is very, very, uh, it's definitely habitable. Obviously, there's nowhere else for this low pressure to develop except for the Bay of Campeche. I mean, look at all that shear. As that ridge pushes north, it's going to start dipping that shear into the eastern Gulf of Mexico and have it dip down into portions of the Western Caribbean, which will leave the Bay of Campeche untouched or barely untouched with shear. By the 18th, like I said, there's going to be like a developing alley as that low pressure and moisture pushes to the north. That's going to push that shear and that ridge as well. It's going to kind of bend, bend to the north and then dip to the east. And that's why the eastern Gulf of Mexico and Western Caribbean is just not going to be the air to watch out for Bill. And that's why Florida and Alabama will be eliminated. By the 19th, there's where we're watching out for that land fog. And this is the GFS. So GFS is taking it kind of more towards eastern Louisiana. And that's exactly where that gap of shear is. Following that low pressure, it's going to be bending bending that ridge. And it's going to allow for this low pressure to actually be barely untouched with shear and make landfall right down there in Louisiana on the 19th. So although it's absolutely horrendous with the amount of shear, you probably think it's impossible. But since the low pressure is so small and the wind flow is probably really small, it can survive in the small pocket of no shear. I mean, it has a whole pocket of actually zero knots. So this can very well develop and stay at a tropical storm status, but obviously still not be very strong. Because if it does get very strong and the wind, spilled, wind field does expand, it'll get torn apart on the western or eastern side because of that shear. So it's going to really stay at a smaller size because of this. Let's not go ahead and get a look at the Canadian wind shear since they are taking a little bit more of a western approach here. And obviously, while well, they do have it at 999 millibars, so a little bit stronger, 2 millibars stronger. So there's obviously something that's keeping the GFS from being at the same status. And that's most likely going to be the shear since obviously there's going to be a ton of moisture. And that should not be the limiting factor or dry air should not be limiting factor. So still a ton of uh, a ton of shear, obviously, in the eastern and central Gulf of Mexico. But the Bay of Campeche stays untouched. And that's exactly where we'll be watching for that low pressure. That ridge just continues to strengthen across eastern um eastern gulf as we go into the 17th and as we go to now to the 18th that low pressure is going to be right there is going to bend that ridge once again so obviously gfs and cmc still have this low pressure having a huge alley of just absolutely no shear really it's kind of like this low pressure is pushing and bending that ridge that high pressure up there kind of pushing all that shear into the eastern eastern gulf eastern uh portions there of um Eastern portion of the Atlantic right there, uh, at least eastern coast there, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, going to be seeing a ton of shear, and as well going to be seeing a ton of shear dipping now to the Western Caribbean and portions of the Bahamas. So I'm going to keep everything perfectly placed for the West Central Gulf of Mexico to have this storm kind of dip down into portions of Western Louisiana. And the reason why this storm does take a Western approach is because that shear that ridge kind of takes a little bit more aggressive dip to the east so it's going to be a lot more sheer into the western and central gulf of mexico so it's going to have to take a little bit sharper of a turn so although it's heading this way at first it's going to have to take a little bit east or western turn as that big alley of no shear does dip to the west so it's exactly why it's taking a more western approach and it's going to allow it to be a lot stronger and more organized Here's a look now at the precipitated water anomalies. So obviously, like I did say, there's going to be a ton of uh, a pretty strong moisture wave. So by the uh, really uh, as early as really the no, really as early as now, we're seeing a ton of moisture right now in the Bay of Campeche. That's going to allow for that low pressure that we have that X right there to kind of hover around for the next few days. The 12th, obviously today, 13th and 14th, it's going to have a ton of moisture. But by the 15th and 16th. It's when that moisture really starts to increase and become more of a variable atmosphere to have this storm develop, as well as there's going to be a little, very little shear and a ton of moisture here in the Bay of Campeche. That's going to allow this to possibly uh, get to a depression by the next, most likely, three or three -ish days. As we now get down to the around 17th here, or not three -ish days, sorry, maybe like four -ish days is a little bit more accurate. Four ish to maybe five ish days is where we'll be watching out for this depression. By the 17th, that moisture bubble does push to the north as a little pressure in the middle of that. So obviously, there's no issue of dry air at this point until the until really later on. Once we get to around the um 
a little bit of the 18. There's going to be a little bit more uh, drier, but all over the United States. So overall, the drier has become basically no threat whatsoever. So the only living factor we're talking about is going to be the shear, which there is a ton of. But as long as this low pressure and wind field stays small, it should not be an issue. But look at that moisture wave in Buffalo. That's going to keep a lot of that limiting factor out. So although there's going to be a ton of shear across this area, this moisture bubble could be large enough to keep a lot of that out, and that can help it thrive. Last, no, less, uh, not last but not least, but second but not least, let's go ahead and look now. At, or second, no, not second, second to last but not least, we'll be looking at the SST. So SSTs right now across the uh, Gulf of Mexico are quite warm, anywhere from maybe 27 degrees Celsius from the Gulf Coast to portions of nearly 29.5 degrees Celsius across the eastern gulf and portion of the Bay of Campeche. But as we're not going to all the way into the 17th, these waters in the, in the southern Bay of Campeche will be quite warmer now, up to almost 30 degrees Celsius. So it's pretty darn favorable, especially with all that moisture. And all those, there's going to be a ton of shear in the uh, EPAC, or not EPAC, sorry, a ton of shear in the north central gulf of Mexico. Uh, those waters will be warm enough because obviously there's going to be kind of a little bit more of an alley, kind of like a little alley like we're talking about, very little, very little shear. So those SSCs will be warm enough to sustain this and heading it straight for Louisiana or Texas with waters being around 28 to possibly 28.5 to as warm as 29 degrees Celsius. So definitely really watching out for the really warm waters to sustain this storm. And then last but not least, let's go ahead and look at the a tropical depression probability. So in the next zero to three days, we actually do have a 80 to 90 percent there for the southern Bay of Campeche. So this can develop with a depression as early as the next three days, according to the European, which I do doubt though. Uh, all the way to the next two to five days, we still do have a small 80, 90, 80 to 90 there off the coast of Mexico, but we still do have a, very, a pretty large expanding 70 to 80 percent. So overall, there's a pretty good chance this will develop within the next four to five days. As we now go later on into the um. 6th and the 19th, we still have that pretty big watch for probability of uh, 40 to 50 down there in the Bay of Campeche, seeing an overall large 20 to 30 and 30 to 40 percent there across the western Gulf of Mexico. Let's now go ahead and look at the tropical storm probability, and as well, this is still pretty consistent at a 10 to 20 percent, so it has decreased a little bit today. The probabilities have definitely decreased compared to yesterday, but still, the National Hurricane Center has increased their probability. And although it looks like these terms will be a bit weaker, we still have plenty of time to see whether the shear moves out of the way or not. But hope you guys enjoyed the video and see you guys later.